In addition to his automobile industry innovations, Henry Ford was a rabid anti-Semite who was convinced that Jews were responsible for all the things he didn't like, from banking to world war to popular American culture. In the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, Mr. Ford found validation for every Jewish conspiracy theory he embraced. In 1918, Ford purchased his hometown newspaper, the Dearborn Independent, and published a stream of anti-Semitic content that lasted for the next seven years. When Ford in the early 1920s began publishing excerpts of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion in his newspaper, the Dearborn Independent, it was a major a boost for anti-Semites in the United States. The newspaper's circulation reached 900,000 by 1926, enhanced by a copy of the newspaper placed on the front seat of every Model T sold at Ford dealerships. After he republished the protocols in his newspaper, he wrote his own version, The International Jew, which detailed how Jews are at the root of every global and American evil. Ford then compiled his columns into a book, printed half a million copies, and distributed them free to libraries. The book was also translated and published in Germany. Adolf Hitler admired Ford's mass production techniques, in addition to his anti-Semitic tracts. Ford is the only American mentioned favorably in Mein Kampf. It did not result in pogroms, and it, it did not necessarily transform American society. Um, but what it did is it lent some additional support, additional encouragement to people who maybe were on the fence and who were suspicious of the Jews, but didn't feel like there was enough uh, on which to uh, base a full-fledged hatred. It is rather surprising, is it not, that whichever way you turn to trace the harmful streams of influence that flow through society, you come upon a group of Jews. In baseball corruption, a group of Jews. In exploitive finance, a group of Jews. In theatrical degeneracy, a group of Jews. In liquor propaganda, a group of Jews. In control of national war policies, a group of Jews. Absolutely dominating the wireless communications of the world, a group of Jews. In the menace of the movies, a group of Jews. In control of the press through business and financial pressure, a group of Jews. War profiteers, 80% of them Jews. Organizers of active opposition of Christian laws and customs, Jews. And now in this miasma of so-called popular music, which combines weak-mindedness with every suggestion of lewdness, again, Jews. If you're talking about swing band music, there were a lot of Jews from the 30s on. There were Jews, I mean, there were Jews in jazz all along, but jazz is American, primarily African-American. And the Jews fell into it because of a, of a gift for melody and a sense of the, the, the tragedy of life. During World War II, the Ford Motor Company, through its German subsidiary, manufactured vehicles for the Nazi war machine. A 1945 U.S. Army report accused the German branch of Ford of serving as an arsenal of Nazism, at least for military vehicles, and with the consent of the parent company in Detroit. In 1938, Henry Ford became the first and only American to be awarded the German Eagle, an award Hitler created, the highest honor a foreign person could receive from the Nazi government, which represented Adolf Hitler's personal admiration and indebtedness to Henry Ford. Ford shared his honor with only four other men, including Mussolini. Jewish groups were horrified and probably called upon Ford in the name of humanity and an Americanism to repudiate the Nazi medal. He did not. You know, he was a great hero, and I think that it, it lent, it lent um, uh, substance 
to charges against Jews. Absolutely. I'm teaching about Henry Ford, both in my American Jewish history classes and also just in my U.S. history classes. And it's really striking to me that for some students, they they have already learned about sort of the, the international Jew and, and Ford's anti-Semitism. But for lots of students, they still see Ford as a hero. The company founded by a man named Henry Ford, good bloodlines, good bloodlines. If you believe in that stuff, you got good blood. <laughs>